Take two. Hey everyone, I'm Taylor Hull, driver of the Comp Cams, Lick Molly, Yellow Speed Racing, Chevrolet Corvette, and Formula Drift. Beside me is my wife, Tamara Hull, also my spotter, general life manager, person who tells me I'm doing wrong at the racetrack. <laughs> AKA the boss. <laughs> yep. Um, so we put out a post on social media earlier this week, just basically a, a question call. See if anybody has any questions about drifting, FD, us, whatever the case may be. Um, a lot of you responded and now we're going to read some of those off and I'm going to answer them. So fire away. Okay. Philip asked if you could turn any section of public road into a drift course, where would it be? I'm assuming you're going to mean that uh, we can shut the roads down. And if we're going to get to shut the roads down, I'm not going drifting on them, believe it or not. I'm going to shut down a few certain highways between the Red Ball Garage in Manhattan, New York, and the Portofino Inn in Redondo Beach, California. And we're going to do a unimpeded cannonball and really go after that record. We're coming for you, Arnie. Um, although our car probably wouldn't make it, but... Um, oh, Arnie's my friend. Yeah, at no <laughs> point did he ever exceed 196 miles an hour on his run, so we'll uh, we'll see if we can do that. Yeah. All right, Sean asks, um, what does a typical weekend of drifting cost at the FD level? So a whole lot. It's a lot. <laughs> the, I'll answer it this way: There's a few teams out there, um, and we'd like to be one of those at some point, also. Um, that rent cars and that could be for people that um, don't have their own they could be a situation where people get to the track and break their car on thursday but in general depending on the team that's going to cost somewhere in the ballpark of ten thousand um, dollars so that's kind of a good benchmark for what a fd weekend would cost um, by the time you figure your depreciation on the car tires fuel fuel in the truck hotels the whole thing to get there it's a lot um it could be more if you're like taylor and blow a motor yeah if you puke a motor or uh shed all the body panels off your car someone yeah. crashes into you and runs over your like brand new bumper I'm nate <laughs> <laughs> um yeah it could be more than that but um this general uh, 10 grand ballpark yeah uh dan asks why doesn't anybody use trucks in fd I'm general pretty good with the rule book, but I think that there is a rule against trucks. I think you can only do like uh, cars, SUVs. Um, there's gotta be a certain run number of production on it as well. I know Alec Robbins used a truck in, for, in uh, Pro-Am, but I think that you can't do it in Pro or Pro-Spec. Number of utes? Uh, you, uh, look, it's the age old uh, question is like a, a the Holden or El Camino or Ranchero, is it a truck, is it a car? Somewhere in between, they let you use that. All right. <clears throat> what is your favorite track? And also, who's your favorite opponent? Jimmy ask. So, favorite track, I've, I have always said Seattle. Uh, it's fast, the area is awesome. Uh, but I think it's starting to transition to Irwindale. The, the nighttime event, it being an electric atmosphere, the super high commitment. There's not a scarier turn I've ever done in any form of driving that's crazier than coming into outer zone two on the inner bank. I think Irwindale might have taken over as my favorite. As far as favorite person to drive with or battle against, I think was the question. I might have to go with my buddy with the mullet that now lives in Florida, Rad Dan Burkett. Yeah, we love the Burkett's. Sorry, Dan, Renee's my favorite. We came into FD at the same time in Pro 2, so uh, we went through a lot of the same hurdles and have uh, sort of come out on the other side. We're both scratching and clawing and fighting, trying to make our way to the top, but we're getting there. All right, Chris, um, he wants to... It's fine, I got bees flying around me too. Slifing, slifing in the south. We're both in that line. We're yeah, like yeah. people riding by on dirt bikes, bees attacking us, everything's fine. Um, what was the turning point for you in drifting the day that you decided, I want to battle and I can do this? Uh, the day I sold all my oval track racing stuff to buy a drift car and I had never drifted before. It was that day. I can't 
Um, as fun as drifting is, and I think there's nothing wrong with doing it just for fun, um, that's not me, that's not who I am. I'm competitive. I've got to go and do and push as hard as I possibly can, push me, push the car, push the team. Uh, so the day I got it, I knew I needed to battle. Um, I'd never thought that I'd be doing it in pro, but- um, Me neither. But I knew I had to battle. Yeah, we've got a whole family full of competitive people. Um, how exactly, Shane wants to know, how exactly are your points scored and what would be considered a perfect chase? So perfect, score basically you're you're graded in three different areas line angle and style style being the most objective of them all um style is basically your your overall throttle commitment how good your initiation looks and then what they call x factors which is in general just how dangerous and committed the overall run looks angle is exactly what it sounds like how sideways the car is throughout the entire course and line is where you place your car on the course there's a predetermined area that the judges put out where they want your car to be um on an oval track like this coming up track at, Ir at not at Irwindale we're going to Orlando not Irwindale I'm getting ahead of myself <laughs> um they want you right up on the outside of the bank uh there's an inner clip coming down off the bank another inner clip across the center port of the portion of the racetrack and then another outer zone to finish. They want you right exactly tire on the line and front bumper on the inside clips everywhere you go and that'll get you a perfect line score. A perfect chase is basically putting your car right, or putting your front tire right behind the lead car's front tire and keeping it there the entire time other than when you transition, you back off, leave just enough room for that car to transition then right back on their door, just like that. And uh, if you just do that the entire time, you win every time. Easy as that. That easy, huh? That easy. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Austin wants to know, if dri drifting wasn't a thing, what would your next best competitive sport be? It's uh, swimming, right? I did once swim. There's probably still a photo or two of me in a Speedo flying around that nobody would ever want to see. Uh, I was in seventh grade, so uh, I, I quickly learned that I didn't have the equipment to do that. <laughs> I don't want to see that. <laughs> um, if I was to do something other than drifting, it would probably be oval track racing. I still have a pro truck that I dabble in oval stuff with. Um, there's other things I'd like to do, like off-road racing and road course racing. Uh, obviously, I do the cannonball style events, so it's going to have tires on it, whatever it is. Something, something to do with cars. Um, I'm just competitive. And I would prefer that it finishes with a flag. Yes, she would. She much prefers the clear-cut winner that nobody can really dispute. Um, it's hard to argue with. Yes. Well, our friend Jared Pink wants to know, who is your favorite Drift University student and why is it me? Obviously, it's Jared. <laughs> and seriously, though, how do you find it best to present your race program to sponsors? And does your sponsor deck use viewership from the Formula D ratings? So two parts to that. Um, Jared Pink, another prominent YouTuber. If you haven't already watched his stuff, go on Wrench Every Day. He, uh, he runs that channel. Um, really great content. Jared came and did our school with us. So if you don't know already, Tamara and I own and operate Drift University, which is a school that anybody at any skill level can come to. Um, you can bring your own car, you can rent one from us. If you've never drifted, you know, we've had people that are 13, 14 years old that have never driven a manual transmission come, and we've had people that compete in Pro-Am and Clutch Kickers come and everything in between. So if you've ever thought about wanting to learn how to drift or want to elevate your drift game, we can do that. Uh, as far as Jared's question, uh, the deck and how we approach sponsors, yes, we use those analytics that Formula Drift provides that's the demographics, the viewership, all those type of things. We put that in a, a PDF proposal and we send that out to our potential sponsors. And that's how we get the information about out about who we are, what we can offer. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of how it goes. Yeah, and if he can teach our 15 year old to drive a manual in a day and drift in a day, he can teach you, sign up. That's right. All right. Um, West Virginia pork chop <laughs> wants to know how do you get grip in the car when it's sliding? So there's a couple things you can do when the car is actually sideways to to get grip back in it. The 
the easiest one probably is uh, let off the gas. Um, the, the more on throttle you are, the faster your wheel speed's gonna be and to some degree, the less grip you're gonna have. So if you back out of the throttle, the tires slow down and the, the tires start to catch up with the actual speed of the car and it'll pull some grip back into it. You can also use some left foot brake. That'll help get grip back into it. And the last thing you can do is pull a little bit of angle out of the car and that will help gain grip as well. If you're talking about what sort of adjustments you can make between runs to get grip in the car, um, we're fortunate to be on GT radials this year and those tires make so much grip naturally. We don't have to run super low air pressure, but running lower air pressure will gain grip. Um, our yellow speed coilovers are super responsive to adjustments. So there's a lot of times when we're going in there and adjusting the dampening, either stiffer or softer to play with the grip levels as well. Um, you can do things like adjust the rear toe that will change the grip level. You can take rear toe out and get it more, more even, and that will have less grip in the car. Nice plug there. That's right. Thanks GT and Yellow Speed for all the love. We appreciate you. Um, another friend of ours. We have another friend on here. We have friends, believe it or not. According to Facebook or Instagram, he wouldn't think so, right? Anytime Taylor hits the track. Um, what are the lottery numbers? Uh, 82. 24. 3. Uh, 29. Is there got to be one more? Is it 5? Where's 29? My birthday. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's my birthday. <laughs> it's fine. Just go with one. That's where we'll finish in Orlando. We have lots. Next. <laughs> next question. <laughs> um, Keith, um, says um what got you into drifting as a motorsport uh i was already doing asphalt oval track racing started realizing that that was getting outrageously expensive so why would i not get into something that you spend thousands of dollars burning up 20 or 30 tires in a day um but no really uh i had some friends in high school that were into drifting and i kind of got burnt out on the oval track thing so I sold everything I had and bought a drift car. Um, watched it enough times, got to be a fan. Really following FD closely in like 2011, Dai Yoshihara was my favorite driver. Watched him win the championship that year, that year and really got hooked. Yeah, I think uh, you called me from work one day and Taylor was like, I think I'm buying a drift car. I'm like, what are you talking about? Um, and then Thursday we had a drift car and almost 10 years later, here we are. Yeah. <laughs> You can do it too. <laughs> you can probably hear deer walking around behind us. I know. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> Got him. Any tips on getting an FD license and want to go for it, but don't know how to start? Yeah. A uh, couple things. Get a car. Um, our school cars are great. Any of them are great cars to start with. We've got a Corvette, a Mustang. E46 BMW and a 350Z, any of those would be a great choice. Buy one within your means that you can afford to drive. Um, drive as much as you possibly can. Come to our Drift University if you can. Uh, we'd love to have you out. We do classes typically at Mid Pond in Birmingham, but we're gonna do some more around the Southeast. We've got some battle classes and some regular classes. Um, Find a local tire company that will sell you used tires and just drive, drive, drive as much as you possibly can. And don't try and build, do a build for your first car if you can help it. Uh, just get something that you can drive, that you enjoy, that you can afford. Yep, seat time, seat time, seat time. Um, <clears throat> when are you going to do the, this is like my favorite question, if the bug doesn't attack me first. Um, when are you going to do the Wrangler Blue and Yellow inspired livery? Not library. livery. It depends on where you're from. <laughs> in, um, in the south, from uh, coming from oval track racing, it's paint scheme. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Livery was a term I'd never heard until we got to drifting. I'm like, there are people are uh, coming up to me like, what kind of livery are you going to run? I'm like, I'm, is that like oil or... What is that? But uh, anyway, the blue and yellow Wrangler car is one of my favorite cars that Dale ever drove. Um, when we'll get to run it, I don't know. Uh, if Wrangler comes aboard, uh, Mama needs a pair, of, new pair of jeans, so I'm all about some Wrangler. 
Wrangler is my favorite jeans. That's what I have on most of the time when I wear pants. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll put it on something at some point, even if it's just for a school car, I'd love to have a car that's got the blue and yellow and it, it'd be a real cool thing to do. I think so too. All right, Brandon wants to know, do you ever get to fly anymore? Or no, short answer, other than getting uh, getting on 737s and going across the country and getting bumped off because we fly standby on Delta, not much. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, at one point, maybe 10 years ago, God, has it been that long? Probably 10 years ago, my grandfather had a Cessna 172 and I was probably three quarters of the way through getting my pilot's license and he passed away. My uncle got the airplane, sold the airplane and I never got to finish. So um, something I've always wanted to, to do to go back and finish. My brother-in-law, sister-in-law and nephew were in a pretty bad plane crash in a small plane. They all survived and are doing much better now, but that kind of got me a little bit gun shy because he's a F-18 pilot. So if he can get in a crash, um, I really have no business behind the wheel of an airplane, but uh, maybe one day. I don't know. No plans right now. Bummer. Man, I think you'd look good in a pilot uniform. Yeah, you'd think I'd look good at that insurance check you'd collect if I didn't come back. <laughs> well, <laughs> all right. Patrick wants to know, um, what parts are you absolutely, well, Patrick wants to know what parts are you absolutely getting for free? And I would say, um, we have some really, really great partners. And when you say free, they're not giving us this for free, right? We are providing, we're exchanging that, you know, for marketing for them. It is a sponsorship. Like we understand the value in their product and their services um, and the level of support that they provide for our program. So we are so um, thankful to all of our amazing partners, whether it be something something as small as a product sponsorship on up um, to financial support we are um, truly thankful yeah we really don't view anything as free it's an exchange and it's a true partnership so yeah. well said all right um i don't really know how to say this person's uh facebook name or instagram um handle but we um they are wanting to know can you do fd for a living or is it more of a hobby thing there's a handful of people that do FD as a living. Um, I think of people like Osbo, um, people like Turk, and even those people do other things on the side as well, um, I'm sure for additional income. But the vast majority of people that run in Formula Drift um, do other things too. Um, you think people like Forsberg, he does a lot, of, a lot of different media outlets and shows and things like that. Yes, he drives um, and has great partners as well, but um, there's not many people that just show up with a helmet bag and drive in, in FD. We all have some other side gig. Um, you know, I, we both work seven to five jobs and then come back and, and hustle all night and all day and on the weekends and do what we have to do and make this happen. Um, and I'll, just about everybody else does too. Yeah, there's some really hardworking people in uh, Formula Drift. And I think we passed uh, the hobby status a long time ago. When you sacrifice, you know, everything whether it's our time our resources money um, we sacrifice and put off starting a family and um, so many things to chase this dream so we passed that status a long time ago no doubt all right um so what part of georgia are y'all from i love y'all uh i'll let you say it first sonoy sonoa no it rhymes with boy it says it on our thing rhymes with boy Sonoy. Look it up, y'all. It's Sonoa. Sonoy. It's a town just below Peachtree City, uh, which is about 40 minutes south of the Atlanta airport. And uh, I call it Sonoa. She calls it Sonoy. Other people call it Sonoy. Uh, it's a heated debate around here. Uh, I'll never change, even if you prove me wrong. I'm t it's too ingrained in me now, but that's where we're from. No, we're not from Sonoya. Sonoy. Sonoa. Whatever. Ah, where are you from? I was born in Dallas, Texas. And I'm from LA. I mean, lower Alabama, but it's still L LA. It's the better LA. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, we're gonna get probably flamed for that one. Maybe not. All still right. Still true. <laughs> 
Um, Low Key X wants to know who do you think is the hardest driver to drive against in FD and why? And also, how in the hell do you afford Formula Drift? Uh, hardest driver to drive against in FD. I don't look at it like that. Uh, it's whoever I'm paired up against and line, lined up with at that given time in any series I'm running against. Um, I don't think you can look at it in that way. Everybody has good days. Everybody has bad days. Um, everybody has failures on their car and failures in their mind. Um, it happened to me at Road Atlanta last week. So um, you just put yourself in the mindset of who you're up against right then, what their car is, what that capability can be, and prepare yourself for anything to happen because it inevitably will. What was the second part of the question? How do we afford FD? Uh, everything I rattled off earlier. Buying and selling cars extra, normal nine to five job, help from awesome partners, uh, drift school, being a dealer for some, some of our partners as well, like Koenig and Yellow Speed, um, yeah. A lot, a lot is how we afford FD. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We uh, definitely have our hustle game, full on game mode for sure. Um, but we truly are partnered with some really great people. And I say it, and I think in almost every Formula Drift Instagram post, go out and buy everything these people make. Um, they are our family um, and they are amazing and um, they stand by their products and their services. So, yeah. Yes. All right. Um, what's the most expensive part of building an FD car besides the motor and how much does a car cost to build? Uh, you wouldn't think it the most expensive thing on an FD car other than the motor and I'm going to couple together the motor and the transmission and the rear end all that stuff's really expensive but it's all the little things that you don't think about you're going to spend the same amount of money on all that little BS stuff than you will the big stuff all combined um, and I'm talking about stuff like wiring and body panels and plumbing and um you know oil and wheels and axles and the wrap and all the little stuff that you just don't think about budgeting that's the stuff that will really sneak up and get you um because because you did not budget for it how much does a car cost to build? Oh, if uh, if you were to just buy everything retail and put it together, even yourself, you're probably somewhere in the ballpark of 100 to 150 grand if I had to bet. Where's the 150 grand on a car? I'd rather not look at the receipts. Um, denial, denial, denial. We yeah. just turn everything in at the end of the year. Denial, denial. Yeah, I don't want to see it. I made the mistake of looking at our tax documents. Uh, normally, I just let you do that and it, made me sick it's a lot um well that's it all right well uh, that was cool yeah so if you have any other questions leave them in the comments maybe we'll do another video like this our next video i think is going to be one where i'm going to interview tamara and it's basically just going to go through a run so i'm i'm going to pick one of my qualifying runs because it'll be great footage and um I'll have her break down what she's looking at in that video um, from a line angle style perspective, you know, basically acting like she would be a judge and what they would be looking for out of the run and what she'd be communicating with me on the radio and telling me how to do better. She's really good at that. So that'll be the next one. It should be really fun. If you haven't already, take a moment to like, comment, subscribe. We'll be doing more of these type of videos. If there is a different type of video that you'd like to see from us, from the car collection, from Jewish University, whatever you'd like to see, let us know. And I will be doing some of the videos where um, we're uploading things the day of. Once we get to FD Orlando, it seems like everybody really is enjoying that part. So I'm looking forward to showing you those. Um, anything else? Nope, I guess I'm gonna be up next. All right. Ask away. <laughs> we'll see you on the next video. Thank you again, as always. Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Hull, driver of the Comp Cams Yellow Speed Racing. It's a mouthful. <laughs> I think that's give you funny. a mouthful. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm Taylor Hull, driver of the
<laughs> Hang on. Got quite a few answers back, or quite a few questions back. And Start over, because you like look at me like I'm crazy. What are you talking about? Start over. <laughs>